Mike Bloomberg has been spending hundreds of millions of dollars to basically buy his way into third place. And once the polls really started to show that he is someone who could be in this race for quite some time, given that he has unlimited resources, well, online leftists began doing what they've been doing throughout the course of this primary, vetting Mike Bloomberg like all other candidates. And the reason why it's so important for people online to dig through the history of these candidates is because we don't have a competent mainstream media who's willing to do that. Not only are they incompetent, but they refuse to actually vet these candidates in a really meaningful way. So once we realized that Mike Bloomberg is someone that we should be taking seriously, people online decided to dig through his history and, shocker, he has a lot of skeletons in his closet. So for example, Ben Dixon released audio of Mike Bloomberg at the Aspen Institute where he basically is being explicitly racist. Now, when these types of things come up, when you have direct audio and video footage of him saying racist and sexist and transphobic things, like there's no way that you can really spin that. You can't adequately defend yourself. So all you can basically do is deflect. And that's what we saw from mainstream media. For example, someone who was, who was previously on Mike Bloomberg's payroll at CNN decided to, rather than defending the merits of what Mike Bloomberg said, decided to attack Ben Dixon because he released that audio. So here's the thing. Important context here. We don't have the full tape. So this is obviously snippets that have been released. The podcaster and the writer that released the sound is clearly a Bernie supporter. If you look at his Twitter feed, he's very anti-Bloomberg. He is promoting a hashtag, Bloomberg is a racist. We don't know how he got the sound to begin with. So lots of questions are being asked, especially on the timing of this. As you noted in your introduction, a poll yesterday shows Bloomberg rising in the polls and particularly strong support in the African-American community. He polled at 22 percent, just behind Joe Biden at 27 percent. So the timing here and the mission here all calling into but question. Also know, right? So like that's what you have to do if you're backed into a corner. You have no other way to defend yourself. That audio is absolutely incriminating. And there's more. I mean, we just saw clips of Mike Bloomberg saying that black and brown people don't know how to behave, for example. Take a look. But nevertheless, there's this enormous cohort of black and Latino males age, let's say, 16 to 25 that don't have jobs, don't have any prospects, don't know how to find jobs, don't know uh, that they, what their skill sets are, don't know how to behave in the workplace where but they let, have to work let collaboratively. Me I, let me so this is indefensible. There's no way to defend yourself if you are Mike Bloomberg. And on top of that, there are more claims of sexual harassment against Mike Bloomberg than there are against Donald Trump. So if I'm Mike Bloomberg, what do I do in this situation? Well, if I were a good person, I'd drop out and stay out of politics forever, but that's not the reality of the situation. So what Mike Bloomberg has to do is basically try to delegitimize the people who are going after him. Now, primarily it's Bernie supporters going after him, but really this is a concerted effort by a lot of people online who don't want an oligarch to be able to buy elections. Because, I mean, if Mike Bloomberg can do this, then are we going to see Jeff Bezos do this in 2024 and the Walton family do this in 2028? Like, it's a never-ending cycle of plutocracy. We're further devolving into an oligarchy, and we don't want that to happen. So concerned citizens are vetting Mike Bloomberg since the media refuses to do that. And he has no choice but to delegitimize people, shoot the messengers rather than the message itself, because... This is all indefensible. So if you go after the people who are going after you, that's really the only way that you could possibly deflect. And that's what Mike Bloomberg tried to do. So he released an ad attacking Bernie Sanders supporters, calling out the harassment of angry Bernie bros. And this is absolutely glorious because it really demonstrates how desperate he is. And his team, they're trying to do whatever they possibly can to distract us from his horribly racist and transphobic comments. It is vitally important for those of us who hold different views
to be able to engage in a civil discourse. So listen, he's doing this because... Nobody is exposing Mike Bloomberg more than Bernie Sanders supporters. So every other candidate in this race currently needs to thank Bernie supporters rather than attacking them because nobody else is brave enough to call out Mike Bloomberg. And look, some of those tweets, I admit, were mean-spirited, but other tweets, if you pause the video and look at each individual one, you'll see that some of them actually were calling out Mike Bloomberg's racism. So what he's essentially communicating is that it's mean, it's harassment, to call out my racism. That's what we're seeing here. And it's funny because you can literally do this. You can make the same attack ad against every other candidate. And back in 2016, when Bernie Bros were supposedly at, you know, their all-time most harshest, well, it was actually Hillary Clinton supporters who were more aggressive with regard to the Democratic primary, and Bernie supporters were actually the least aggressive online. And it really doesn't matter who is and isn't the most aggressive because one example of someone being abusive online is not enough to denote general applicability. Just because someone online is mean to you who supports Bernie Sanders, that doesn't mean that that represents the entire campaign or base of support. But understand, like, all this is, is Mike Bloomberg's attempt to deflect. He doesn't want you to dig through his record, so he's trying to delegitimize the people who are actually vetting him and doing what the mainstream media refuses to do. Now, to their credit, they have been talking more about Mike Bloomberg's record, but still, not as much as they should be. Like for someone who is spending hundreds of millions of dollars and effectively running this parallel primary where he features ads with people saying, hey, we need Mike Bloomberg, but he hides his face. I mean, he knows his record is trash. So he his only move here strategically is to attack the people who are calling him out. That's what he's doing. And on top of that, what this is also about is what these candidates like Mike Bloomberg want is for Bernie Sanders supporters to demobilize. They want Bernie Sanders supporters to shut up right? Because if they can get us to think that we're making Bernie Sanders look bad and therefore hurting his chances with our behavior, then maybe we'll be quiet when we see Mike Bloomberg saying something racist. Maybe we won't speak out if we see the mainstream media or Mike Bloomberg or anyone using pro-corporate talking points to argue against Medicare for All, a literal life-saving policy. They want us to shut up. They want us to be quiet. But that's not going to happen. And it doesn't matter if we're quiet or not, the narrative will always be that Bernie supporters are unlike every other candidate supporters. We are uniquely harsh. We harass people possibly more so than Trump. And it doesn't matter what we do or don't do. The narrative will be what candidates believe it should be if they think that can actually hurt Bernie Sanders. And what Mike Bloomberg is going to learn is that when you go after Bernie Sanders supporters directly, you are going after the most passionate, motivated and politically savvy group of people online. Sure, maybe at times we shit post a little bit too much. I think I'm guilty of this myself. But at the end of the day, we are fighting for justice, economic justice, racial justice, social justice. We believe that we are fighting for the greater good of the country, for the world, right? Because we don't have a choice. So we're not going to stop calling out people who spread lies and misinformation and corporate propaganda. Um, and Mike Bloomberg is going to learn firsthand that you're going to want to be weary about going after Bernie Sanders supporters in such a direct way, because if you want to release an attack ad against us, we'll release an attack ad back against you. Uh, for example, this remix from John, which I found absolutely phenomenal. What's that saying again? You are the company you keep? Yeah. So um, that's one ad, but here's another one, which gets more into the details of all these sexual harassment lawsuits against Mike Bloomberg. This one might be even more devastating.
Black and Latino males aged, let's say, 16 to 25, don't know how to behave in the workplace. Zakai told her boss, Michael Bloomberg, she was pregnant. She thought he would be pleased, and he said to her, kill it. Now that was incredible. So listen, you are hoping that by attacking Bernie Sanders supporters directly, you get us to shut up. You get us to stop looking into the record of Mike Bloomberg. And maybe you silence a couple of us, right? Maybe you persuade us that we should be quiet, not call out other candidates, not criticize people in mainstream media because, you know, that's going to hurt Bernie Sanders' chances. But there are millions of us, and not just here at home, but around the globe who are anxiously watching to see that we elect Bernie Sanders because... We all want to save the planet. This is a united front, not just in the United States, but internationally, around the world. This is a global progressive movement. So you may be able to silence some people, but you're not going to be able to silence all of us. And whenever you push back against us, we're going to hit back 10 times harder because what Mike Bloomberg is going to need to realize is that, you know, Bernie supporters and leftists in general, we're not like traditional Democrats. When Democrats face criticism and scrutiny, what they tend to do is roll over and die but we always hit back. We actually fight because we actually believe in something. We stand up for ourselves because we're right and you're wrong. We're on the right side of history. You are on the wrong side of history. We're for justice. You're against justice in all forms. So Mike Bloomberg is a horrible human being and progressives are going to continue to expose his atrocious record. And we don't really even have to do that much. We don't have to dig that deep. All we have to do is show old clips of Bloomberg talking and he incriminates himself because he just is an objectively racist, bad person who thinks he can be president because he has a lot of money. And maybe that can happen. Maybe he can buy his way into the White House. But it's not going to happen without the most forceful pushback imaginable from the left. And if we didn't push back against him, then I think that we would be acting immorally. We have to stop what would be just the collapse of a democracy entirely. Right? It would be a full-blown oligarchy if we had a second billionaire in two election cycles in a row buy his way into the White House. We have to push back. Because if we don't, then we're just as bad as everyone else who's complacent and not doing anything as things go to shit in this country, as people die because they don't have health insurance, as people sleep on the streets. We have to fight back because we don't have a choice. Period.